Okay, so we're back with HubSpot custom code workflows. Um, this was the most popular video last time we published it. This was the associating contact to a company using HubSpot's uh, custom code uh, module on the workflows. And again, there are other ways to do these that don't re require code, um, but learning and building stuff with code is pretty fun. Uh, if you're looking for ways that don't require code, um, check out Associate on the App Store. I think there's a couple other ones as well, but just wanted to throw that out there. You can save yourself a little bit of trouble uh, and use a pre-built module for these sort of things. But to really push HubSpot past its limits, uh, past the product roadmap of these uh, external third-party apps, uh, you got to learn how to do some of this yourself. So uh, first up, what I'm going to do is I need to go and create a new private app key. Um, the one I made in the last video, I obviously expired it. So since everyone that saw it in the video, I didn't want people to be able to go in and pull data. Um, so let me make this associate with custom code. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go here. Um, so what we're doing now is we are going and creating a private app that will allow us to uh, essentially make the API, API calls. Um, and so what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to use the same one that I used originally, and I'm just going to refresh it. So the scopes and everything have already been created. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip this video uh, into a separate video on how to generate an API or a private app key. Can't remember if I, I did that for the last one or not. So let's see. So if we were generating it from scratch, which we are since we're clipping this video, um, what we're going to want to do is go to HubSpot uh, API docs. And you first need to come here, go to the create a private app and click on this. The name again, doesn't really matter too much, obviously make it uh, as descriptive as you need it to be. But what, where this will come in is if you are um, looking back at the property change history, you can see uh, that this specific uh, API key or private app secret key uh, was the one that, that made the change. So that's pretty cool. And that's something that you weren't able to do with the HubSpot API key. So let's say um, associate meeting uh, with related deals. Uh, so this was an interesting question that was just asked to me on LinkedIn. That kind of inspired me to um, to make a couple more of these since it seemed like people um, were enjoying them or at least found them helpful. <laughs> uh, so first up, you need to determine the scope. So now that we've got a name, we come here and I'm just gonna open all of these and go over it again. Um, in case you didn't see the, the other original custom code uh, association video. So what are these scopes? Do you just want to check all of the boxes here? The answer is no, uh, that would sort of defeat the purpose of, of using private app keys. Um, what you want to do is determine what are the minimal scopes yeah, you can see here. What are the fewest possible scopes that you can give to an API key in order for that piece of custom code or that app to function? Um, and so for associating meetings to, we're gonna say in this workflow, I haven't coded this yet. Um, and if you're just watching this smaller video, uh, make sure to check out link in the description to some of our other custom coded workflows. But essentially what we're going to do um, in the larger video is show you how to get all of the deals associated to a contact and associate those meetings that were associated to that contact um, to the most recent deal. And so obviously this would vary a lot based off, you know, what exactly you're trying to, to solve for. Um, but this is going to be a fun one. So, okay. So first up, you want to go here and you want to go to CRM objects. We're going to go to contact since we're going to start there. 
and um, we are going to also pull up the associations, which I believe, let's see. Yep, there it is. Okay, so the associations documents, read through these, even if you are not a, a traditional developer. Um, HubSpot has some of the uh, easiest to read documentation, in my opinion, great for learning how to use APIs, getting started here. Um, what we're going to do is just read through this. So you can see you can create associations. And so this is what we'll be doing when we associate a meeting uh, to a deal, even if it was uh, unrelated when that meeting was created. Um, this will be retrieving associations. So this is what we'll use to get all of the deals related to the contact. And then we'll do some other just Python logic to determine the most recent association. I can show you a little trick there as well, um, based on the way HubSpot returns this when you call this value. Um, so association endpoints. Uh, but basically, we're still we're still looking at scope. Um, so we're going to go here and you can see here, uh, these are the scopes that are required to, for this case, this is deleting associations, Let's see creating associations. Uh, so you'll see here that um, the associations isn't the greatest in my opinion. Uh, so if you're creating associations, you'll want to use the uh, contacts that right, since we're going to be associating uh, contacts. So we're going to go here, we're going to go CRM objects contacts, we want to be able to both read and write those same things with deals, we want to be able to read uh, and write that. Uh, as of recording this video, uh, engagements, all of that stuff just lives on the contact level. And again, all of this assumes that the meeting ID that you have in the first place is um, associated to a contact. If it's not associated to any contact somehow, uh, you won't be able to use this. Okay, so let's see. Lists, we're not doing anything with lists. For this example, we're not doing anything with companies. Uh, contacts, not doing anything with custom objects. So we should be good on all of this schemas. So schemas, you don't need schemas are for things like um, changing the, the structure of the actual contact object itself. And so uh, if you wanted to yeah, make a property required or do something, uh, add a new property to the contact record or the contact object, actually, you could do that, but we don't need it for this case. Settings, you don't need any of this. Standards, scopes, these are some a variety of things, just making sure. I don't think you need any of these, but I'm just seeing if there's anything here that's uh, worth mentioning. Uh, nothing really, this should be enough in order to create our scope. And so if you're you're just watching the, um, the short video on creating scopes and how to determine which scopes to create, um, that'll be it. I do wanna show you as well, just something that is a little bit easier. So let's say if you were just trying to read information about a contact, all you would need, the only scope that you need to give uh, to that app or to that private app key is objects.contacts.read. So it can be as simple as that. And then when you get into associations, it's a little bit more complicated. But uh, if you're following along, all you need is these for our specific example. So that is going to be it on the um, creating a private app key and how to create that app portion of this video. Um, if you're watching the farther video, obviously we're going to continue. And so we're going to go ahead and show this token. We're going to copy this token and then we're going to go back to our see, automation workflow. Associate with custom code. Okay, and so I'll just explain some of this code since I, I didn't really want to rewrite it. I'm also going to add the secret since this is the old secret. So let's just go ahead and say this is
So we've got our updated app key. We don't need this at this point. Okay, so this was the code from associating a contact with a company. Um, I'm not going to rebuild this from scratch. What I am gonna do is explain each of these things in case you hadn't seen the other video. Uh, so here we've got the OAuth code. And so this is getting, this is how you get data from this secrets area. So whatever is, whatever secrets that you're passing. So this could be things like HubSpot private API keys. This could be, uh, you know, other important API keys. If you're, you're calling, you know, another service that you don't want everyone essentially to be able to go in and see. In this case, we've changed it from OAuth to updated app key. So we're going to change the name here as well. Um, this is just a variable. So um, again, it's it's called OAuth because that's how we're we're authenticating essentially. Um, so OAuth equals bearer plus OAuth code. Uh, so essentially, what this is, this part is pulling that private app key that you saw us copy a couple minutes ago. This part is getting it formatted correctly to actually make the call. So if you'll see, um, if you see this, so everything or all this stuff that I'm doing, we're not gonna be using the, the, the HubSpot, like, well, it's, it's the same concept, even if you are using the HubSpot uh, method of authorization. Um, but we just use curl request, and you can see here that you have to put bearer and then space your access token here. And so that's what this part is doing, bearer space, our access token. Uh, the header, so this is just the, um, the the data that you need to pass. So this is the authorization portion, and this is telling um, you know, the function or the API how to interpret uh, what you're sending. Okay, and so previously we had got in the contact ID, and so we want to do that same thing again, so we'll leave that. And then we had hard-coded a specific company into the system. And so, you know, the natural question is, you know, it's not very practical to hard-code every single thing that you'll need. Uh, you'll need another function that can find, um, you know, that event or something, or those deals that are associated to the contact and then associate with them. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create, and I'm gonna, we're gonna find a contact that we're gonna use as our test contact. Let's say, Okay, Mr. Manuel is going to be our, our test contact of the day. Got a, a nice deal associated there. Let's go ahead and add another deal. So call this Babel Lab New Deal. <laughs> um, okay, amount, say $1,000, close date, all that good stuff, timeline activity. Um, Last 30 days, custom, okay. Okay, so now this new deal is created, but the use case here is we have a meeting with this person and it doesn't automatically associate to the next deal. So we go log meeting, and in this case, it is associating, but let's say uh, it was created through a meeting link. And so, um, yeah, let me just, let's see. A meeting link. Okay, so basically I just unchecked associate with the other records. Um, again, let's go here and say example meeting. And then I'm going to log another one as well, just to give us multiple to have to sort through. Okay, so now we've got two meetings. One meeting is uh, another meeting and the other is example meeting. And we've got two deals. What we want to do here 
is take. Um, so we'll get rid of this company ID. I'll just uh, mute that out. Associate contact with company. So we can use the same structure of this workflow. We'll just modify it slightly. And yeah, then we can call another function here. So let's see, def get. So what do we want to do first? So if we're trying to get the most recent created deal um, that's associated to, to Manuel, and then get the most recent meeting associated to Manuel and associate that meeting with this deal. That's going to be our goal. So right now, this another meeting does not show up here. We want it to, or does not show up here. And we want it to. So that's what we're going to try to do. Okay, so first up, we need to get the associated deals. So get associated deals, and that'll likely need a contact ID, which we have. Um, and this will do something, do something. And then we want to get the associated meetings. So def get associated meetings. And all we need for that as well is the contact ID, which we have. Do something. Okay, let's say we had all of this. Um, We've got all the deals, we've got all the meetings. What's the last thing that we need to do? We need to associate this meeting, and it'll be a meeting ID, with the, the deal that we're chosen. Okay, so get associated deals, get associated meetings, and then associate contact with company. We want to modify this. And we want to, let's say, we'll say associate meeting with deal. And we're not only going to get associated meetings, we're going to return the most recent one, only return the most recent meeting. And then same thing with this, only return the most recent created deal. This we're not going to need. Um, so if we're associating a meeting and a deal, we don't need a contact in company ID. We need a meeting ID and a deal ID. So we don't have either of those, which is a problem, <laughs> but it's a temporary problem because this is going to return deal ID and then return, just kind of return meeting ID. So that's our goal for each of these is to return one of those. And then we'll have to change this URL, of course, um, but the response should be good. So I'm gonna just comment this out and I'll comment this out as well, uh, just for the meantime. Okay, so okay, and then so once we've you know decided we want to get the uh, deals associated with contact, we come over to the associations documentation, um, and essentially, if you're new to this, you can use this to see the different endpoints. And so, um, what we're looking for here is essentially a list. And if you're unfamiliar, you can kind of click through. Um, but batch is essentially if you want to do something in bulk, um, basic or some of the easier ones. List is the one that we're looking for. Um, and essentially it says list all associations of an object by object type limit 1000 per call. Okay, and so you see here, this looks very similar to the scopes that we gave uh, at the beginning of this video. And so what we're going to do here, and this is the, the easiest way to understand it, um, you just fill in the information here. And so object type is uh, contacts. 
and the uh, two objects. This is the one that you want to see, um, you know, the associated ones. So in this case, we're seeing all of the deals associated with these contacts. And then this is the actual contact ID. So we don't have uh, that exact one now, but uh, this should be enough. So uh, now we can take this URL and that becomes our request URL over here. And so um, just like we did before, we're going to have a URL equals Bob C. And again, uh, this is something that you only need to think about if you anticipate having lots and lots of uh, records that you're working with. So if you're, for example, I don't know even what would be a good example. If you're trying to get all of the maybe phone calls to a company, and if it's uh, like a massive, com ma massive company that are, you've been working for years, maybe you have more than a thousand phone calls. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go, so this is going to get all of the deals. And then, yeah, what we're going to do here is we're going to use Insomnia. And so if you watched the previous video, Insomnia is how we can easily test these things um, without having to actually run the custom code itself. So I'm going to go into an Insomnia and you can see here, I'm kind of using an older uh, request that we're going to have to modify. But basically, Insomnia, Postman, these other tools allow you to test it. You can also test it here on the association. So if you have an actual um, contact ID, you can do that here. And I'm going to do both, actually, because it makes sense. I can't remember if we did both in the other video or not. Um, if you are using something like Insomnia, the the reason to use something like this is number one, it's free. Uh, number two, you can save all these things. So uh, if you're, the problem, if you're not like often using custom code, you're gonna forget. And even if you are often using it, uh, you're gonna forget again. Um, so basically having something like this, you can go and reference um, anytime you want. Like I can just search, hey, I want to see all of the times that I get uh, or I just name it appropriately. So I think I've named this get deals associated to a company. And so we're going to change this to contacts. We're going to do this. This we're going to associate, we're going to see the associated deals error. This is where we'll put the, uh, the token content type location. Okay. So you'll see this is the same exact stuff we're doing here, headers and then headers. So hopefully that uh, starts to click in terms of how they're connected. Now let's go back in here Let's get that header that we were just using. Integrations. Um, private apps. Associate, we're gonna view access token. Again, by the time anyone sees this, I'm gonna have disabled this one. Um, so you'll have to use your own to, to test things out. Uh, so let's, well, let's do this one first since we we're just looking at this. Okay, so let's double check, make sure everything is set up correctly, um, what we're expecting. And this is something that I always do when I'm working with code or just workflows in general. What are we expecting to happen? Like if this goes right, uh, what should what should happen? Um, and what should happen is you should see two, you should see two, uh, essentially associations here, we should see. So in this case, this is saying there is one object that it's associated with, but that was from previous results. Okay, so let's see if it works. Okay, so HubSpot API, CRM, objects, contacts, uh, associations, D. 
deals. Okay, this is, let's take a look here. Builders optional. I've got the headers, our content type, application.json, that's why it appears here. Make sure we've got the correct Okay, so we were using uh, the wrong ID. That is my fault. There you go. Okay, so we've got those two object IDs, and the way that we can test this to make sure it works um, is just search this ID. You'll see that's the whale deal that was associated to Manuel, and there you are. So that is how to get the associated records. And again, you could take this uh, now and um, so yeah, so URL and you, you're performing essentially a get request. So you see here, this is a get. Now you have to do the uh, the code version of this. And so we'll do that here in a second. Um, yeah, but so now it's, now it's working. We know it's working. We want to go here and we want to not hard code. We want to dynamically pass. And so uh, with Python, at least, this is how you do that. You go here and then you can pull in information from the function and then go there. And then we just essentially could copy this. If we really wanted to. Coding is all about uh, being lazy. So copy away. Um, okay, so response request.get URL, specify little header. So this is the information that we're passing. This should all be good. This is just printing to see that it works. Not super necessary, but could be helpful if you're having problems. Uh, this is getting the associated deals. Okay, but what's what's our problem now? So our problem now is that this deal, um, or it's it's a list of deals. It's not one deal. We want the most recent deal. And so, if you see this, it's going to be the deal that we just created. This is the deal that we want, and it is the second in the list. Um, so how can we do this? Especially like if we knew there were only two deals, then we could just say, hey, we want to get the second one. But what if there were an unknown amount of deals? Then we wouldn't um, be able to, and we could. So basically the easiest way to think about this, um, and again, hopefully this video ages well, um, but HubSpot, from, from my experience uh, as of 2023, they will include the um, the newest newest created version or newest created record uh, at the end of the, the list essentially. So what we can do is we can flip the list and then take the first one. And so that's what we're gonna do here. Okay, so we've got we've got this, and I did want to show you, I know I'm kind of jumping around here. I did want to show you how this would work. Um, if you don't want to go out and get something like uh, uh, insomnia or something like that. So you can go here, you can um, essentially input rather than this fake ID, you can input a real one and then you can enter a private app access token here and then click send request. And so since we've got this here, let's just do this real quick, send requests. Same exact thing. Okay, so you can see here, it returned the same exact results. Um, and again, we're still back on that same problem. How can we get the, the most recent? And so there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, you can see a full list of them here. So we could do negative indexing, could use the uh, pop method which seems interesting. Um, you could use a for loop, which is also an interesting way to do this. I think the pop method is going to be the easiest for this specific example. So 
let's go back here and we're essentially doing uh, the list.pop. And so let's see what it is returning. Returning this result. So this results is the uh, array here. So we need to first get that array and then we can pop the last value of that array uh, and it'll return it. And so first up, so we've got response.request.get. This is gonna return us the entire thing. Um, if we want to access something here, we just go here. And we can do results. And then we'll, we'll, go, we'll go ahead and test this essentially. So again, you can test in a variety of different ways. Let's see, man, well, um, which one let's see beerrate.com let's test it let's see if it works this is live coding i do not have this somewhere else uh, okay so this is just uh indented air associated yeah so i'm just going to mute those um, it should be good. Press an indent of block. It's fine. Let's test it again. Okay. And so it did not print us any logs, which is not helpful. Um, Oh, this is not what we wanted to do, not bad. So the JSON is where we wanted to uh, access the results. <clears throat> okay, um, sometimes it doesn't show you in the logs as well, which is kind of interesting. Um, also, you know what I just realized? We're not actually calling the function anywhere. <laughs> okay, so get associated contents. Okay, there you go. It would help if we called the function. There you go. Okay, so now you can see that it looks a little bit different than when we did it using this. You see the results. We've now taken the results and we've just returned what is inside of those results. Uh, so you can continue to use this concept to drill down further and further. The problem is you're dealing with different like data types, data structures. Um, so next up, you've got a, a dictionary inside of here. So this array, this little symbol, this little um, yeah, whatever, whatever the symbol is, is called. I don't know off the top of my head, um, but that is indicating an array and this is indicating a dictionary. And so within the dictionary, you can go here and you can see that this is, you know, the, the first one, and we're going to use that pop and we're going to get the last one out. Uh, so get associated deals. We are going to take this. Um, I'm going to set this as results equals blank, remove that. And then if we do results.pop, it should return. So print results.pop. It should return um, only the last one. So we should expect to see this 6470. Let's see if it is working like we'd hope it would. Six, four, seven, zero. Okay. So we've returned the very last um, and thus the most recently created associated deal. Now let's go through and do the same thing for meetings. 
this would be a great opportunity to pause the video if you're wanting to sort of test yourself. Uh, at this point, you're really only um, changing out things with code, which is a great way to, you know, initially learn how to use it. And so pause the video. And if you just want to follow along, um, we'll continue now. Easy as that, copy and paste. Uh, what do we change? So we're getting the associated meetings. And so here we'll go to associated meetings, um, got the requests, all of that should be the same. Let's take a look at first printing the results. So you can see um, what that is showing us and then we can present, uh, we can uh, print only the one that we're looking for here. So same, same problem or same thing that we got to do before is just call the function. Again, I'm not saying that this is the best way to structure the code, but for simple things like this, you can just put everything in this, uh, this main function. Okay, let's test this. So we should again be seeing two different IDs. Meeting IDs are a little bit harder to access. Um, the only real way you can get to them, I think is just by building a report. Um, but you'll see here that you've got two things associated to it. Um, and these are different IDs. So you know, this is not just running the deal things. Again, we've also uh, removed the deals. So you know it's working. Uh, and then now we can just pop that. And so now both of these we know are working. And so we could just return uh, results.pop. Results.pop. Return this. Return results.pop. Def associate meeting with deal. Do, 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 do. Okay, um, so we've we've gotten the the meeting ID, we've gotten the deal ID. Now you could either save these to variables um, and reference them here, or you could pass them into this function. So it's going to be kind of weird, but since we know that this is supposed to um, return, and then actually the, the thing that we want to do before that is we're popping it, but we're popping only the last. Yeah, so let's, let, let me rerun this to show you what I mean. Mentally skipped a step here. Okay, so you see how it's showing one, but all we need here is object ID. And so from here, we can do pop, and then we can just reference object ID. So we're gonna go here, and we're going to reference to object ID. Um, let's see, to object ID. Um, okay, and so that, so we've got the associated deals, we've returned the object ID of the most recent deal, and we've returned the object ID of the most recent meeting, so now we just need to somehow get those into here, and so you can either save them as a variable, or you can just pass the function itself, um, and so I'm going to do that, um, and so we're going to say associate meeting with deal, and then instead of passing meeting ID as number one, and again, this is not necessarily how you should do things when you're building an actual app, um, but for these quick and dirty 
custom code workflows, they work just fine. Okay, so let me explain what's happening here. You've got this workflow. You've got this workflow. And you've got a, a meeting ID. So since this function, this get associated meetings, is returning a meeting ID, um, we can just put this here in place of meeting ID. And then same thing with deal ID. Um, and so the only variable that uh, is getting pulled in is this contact ID, and that's getting pulled in from uh, the workflow itself. Okay, so now if we run this, um, well, let's make sure it's contact. So we want to associate objects meeting to deals, and we want to pass the meeting ID here to the deal ID here. Other than that, I think we should be good. So that'll associate the meeting object to the deals object. So what should happen? Again, always thinking like what should happen? So what should happen is we should go to this page, refresh and see that meeting that we created a little bit ago. So let's see if that happens. Being given one fine look, we're returning, we're returning object at D, object at D. I know we skipped some of the testing steps. Um, you should kind of test each step individually. This doesn't really matter for this specific use case. Let's just go ahead and send it. Let's see if it works. Okay. So this, this is good. This is a good sign. Um, so now if we take this deal, we refresh it, we should, should see a meeting. Let's check here. So the association says so complete results. See how it's about to find. Find completed. So this is the meeting ID. This is the deal ID. Default. So something is not right here. even if you go back here okay well there, yeah there it goes so it's showing that it was associated but it associated to the whale deal instead of the most recent deal so that would indicate that the pop did not work correctly so which this is the one two one nine yeah that's very interesting it, it decided to take the one two one nine return result stop pop object id return result stop pop object id get associated contact id with the associated deals this is the problem when you try to combine a bunch of steps Okay, so get associated deal, only return the most recent deal, return that returned 3579, which is uh, just a meeting ID, 
and this is the you know, New Deal. Got objects, meeting, associations, default deals, deal ID. Okay, associated meetings, returns. That is so interesting. It is saying here, here's the values we're passing. And it went and chose the other ones when it did that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to um, call these separately and store these as properties. And so what we're going to do here is just separate it out a little bit. And this is probably the way we should have done it in the first place. Meeting ID. Most recent meeting ID equals blank. Okay, so before we even go through and do that, we're going to print most recent meeting ID and print most recent deal ID. Mm -mm -mm. And then we'll just, we won't associate anything with this one. We should just print. Okay, here, so it's returning this and then it's printing something completely different. So print results pop uh, to return results dot pop. Pop to object ID. Interesting. So for whatever reason, what's happening here is it's saying it's printing one thing and then it's going to this next line that's essentially, you know, the same thing, except it's uh, the object ID. Let's see if this is causing the problem. Shouldn't. Go here, we go here to object ID. We'll test this. Test that. Interesting. It's it's saying one thing. Okay, it will print and then it returns. It returns the completely different thing here. So let's see results. Oh, I know why. <laughs> I know why. That was dumb of me. I usually don't use results.pop. I use results.reversed. Results.pop actually is removing it. And so by the time it gets here, this is the only one that's left. It's what you get when you code live. Okay, so now they're going to be the same, 100%. Perfect. Um, well, I guess we didn't print it since it would have removed it. But you know what I mean. Um, so this is what we were looking for here. And now uh, we could have kept with the other way. But since we already have them here, um, we'll just call the function associate meeting with deal using the most recent meeting ID. 
and most recent created deal ID. Okay, so now what we should expect to see is that, uh, so now that the, the most recent created meeting should associate to the most recent created deal. Gotcha. Okay, so complete. And if we go to Babel Blab, you see this meeting um, that was originally associated with just Manuel is now also associated with the deal. So uh, that is an example of associating uh, contacts, companies, deals, all of it all together. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, again, this was some, some live custom code, nothing too difficult, um, but sometimes you, these basic things uh, catch you up. So. Hopefully this was helpful. If this is your first Massive Flywheel video, um, feel free to check out uh, the rest of our YouTube videos. And if you're a your HubSpot Power user, want to join in on the fun, we've got a Slack community where you can post questions, um, see some of these videos, win prizes, uh, subscribe to the daily newsletter. A lot of fun stuff going on in there. So check it out, link in the description. And yeah, hope you enjoyed.